Hey guys, so in the other video I talked about my host family kind of in a general sense and maybe um, a few of the things I liked and didn't like and you know with any family there's going to be good days and bad days, mostly good, but in this video I want to talk about just one of the worst days that I had with my host family. So there was um, a little boy, he was actually uh, my host father's grandson, uh, so he was Abu's older brother's son, and he was not even three years old. He was always just like, you know, one of the kids in the yard, they have, you know, there's like anywhere from uh, a dozen to 15 kids running around playing games like kids do. Um, coming up to me uh, and trying to, to steal my luck. That was one of the things in their culture, you know, they want to steal your luck. Uh, you're the white man who comes from some place that sounds lucky, so blessed. And this little boy, uh, he was one of them. He was just a, a kid of the family, um, someone that I would try and play games with when I had the, when I was there. And one day, I was leaving my house and he wasn't playing anymore in the morning. He was just like sitting there kind of like rocking and I was like, you know, what's wrong? His mom comes out like, you know, just like, you know, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he's just like looks a little hot, a little heated. Um, I didn't really think anything of it. To me, you know, kids get sick all the time, even in America. Uh, kids are going to get sick, they get fevers. I was like, okay, he's just having a bad day, you know, he'll be fine. I come back later in the evening. Um, he was inside the house. Uh, his mom was making hot tea. And and I thought it was really weird seeing tea leaves uh, get boiled. I was asking, like, what's that for? It's like, oh, it's just for her son. He's not feeling good. Um, just to, you know, help him get better. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, just like a local remedy. You know, when I'm sick, I have tea or, um, you know, some sort of hot drink, maybe just to like to, to breathe easier. So I was like, okay, just I just went about my business, ate, um, studied some French, went to sleep, woke up, and went to work again. I didn't see the kid in the morning. I had left pretty early anyways. It had been raining too, I think. I come back, and um, one of their cousins is at the house. And he's a cousin, he spoke French pretty well. And he starts speaking to me and um, he's asking me if I knew the little boy. I was like, yeah, I knew the little boy. Uh, he was, he lived right next to me in this house. And uh, he said, well, il est décidé. And with my limited French at the time and trying to understand the context, I was really confused. I was like, I thought he had said he decided something because that's, you know, it sounds like that. He decided, like, what did he decide? You know, what did he decide? He's like, no, no, el decide. I was like, well, what did he decide? You know, I kept repeating it. I was like, this is so weird. Like, what did he choose to do? Um, and then he, like, used the other word, like, no, el amour. Le pati. And I was still confused. I was like, but he's just a little kid. You know, he was, you know, how did he die? And, like, how could he be gone? He was just here you know, playing, running around, playing tag, chasing his brother and sister and, you know, having fun, laughing. And, uh, and the guy's like, oh, he just died of malaria. And I was like, is he, he died today? It's like, yeah, he died. He died this morning. Um, they took him to the hospital. Uh, he was still overheating, still a fever. He died at the hospital and they had buried him by the time I got back. Um, they had buried him because, you know, there's no refrigerators to keep bodies and in their culture, when someone dies, you have to bury the body as quickly as possible. So imagine, like, you know, I had started off the day, um, he had been alive and hopefully I was thinking he was just going to get out of bed and, and start running around again. He had just been sick a day and then he was actually gone. And, and I could... I could hear the mom just like crying and then because the neighbors kept coming over and giving their condolences and 
and you know there was a lot of tears he just wailing from inside the house and I was supposed to go in there too and so I went in there and you know I said I was sorry and I, I said it in French and I said it in English because I didn't really have the words I just wanted to kind of express that I was sorry that I, I couldn't believe that, that happened and she was just she, just, she was just there crying um, her husband was there, sad too, um, both of them. You know, they just lost one of their kids, a, a little boy. And I was in shock. I, uh, I didn't really know what to do. I, I went to bed and I woke up the next day and like said I was sorry. I actually tried to hug her. And she, like, you know, they don't hug. And she was, but she accepted it and, you know, she's like, okay, okay. Um, and I, I remember going to the Peace Corps compound and telling my boss that that happened. He actually came by with me later that day as like a Peace Corps, as a big Peace Corps group to give their condolences. And it was just super weird watching it because, you know, it was my first time uh, being so close to someone who had died. Um, the, the other families in the neighborhood came over with bags of candy and they started preparing a ceremony in their culture they you know they have to have a big feast like a celebration of life even for a little boy and they brought over candy because that's what the boy would have liked to have eaten and so like the kids would at least have something to remember uh, on their friends by and um, that's like kind of when things started feeling a little bit too real for me um, particularly because morning and night, uh, I was not only spraying like, you know, anti-mosquito repellent on my body, uh, sleeping under a mosquito net, um, but I was taking uh, doxycycline, which is a malaria prophylaxis, and it prevents uh, malaria. And I had several bottles of it. You know, I had a bottle that was half empty from college, another one that um, hadn't been opened yet. And, and I was thinking like, you know, could one of those have saved him? Could, could I have just, you know, given this little boy like half a pill even? And he would have been, he would have been fine, you know, running around. Still, you know, like saying good morning to me. And, you know, what, what was I supposed to do? I guess, I don't know. You know, the Peace Corps tells you in the beginning, like of your training, that you're going to be receiving a lot of medicine. You'll have a medicine pack and you are never to share your medicine with anyone else um, for liability reasons. They say like, you know, you don't know someone's medical history. What if, what if you give them, makes them sicker? What if, um, what if uh, they die and someone sues you, you go to jail. And like, if they find out you, you get fired. Uh, you're the one that loses everything too. And at the same time, like, if you get fired for saving someone's life, is it worth it? And especially since, you know, there's really no bad side effects from, from Doxy. Um, yeah, I mean, do I feel guilty? You... As a Peace Corps volunteer, you will always have some sense of guilt, uh, especially if you go to some really rough countries. You always have medicine, you always have extra food, you'll have more money than everyone else around you, and you always have a golden, a golden ticket home. You can go home at any time. You can get out of some, some really awful situations, just move. You have that chance. The little boy didn't. But...
Yeah.